started. All right, as I said, welcome everyone to uh, October 13, 2020. Historic Areas Board of Review. First item, HABR 20-13, application of Catherine Martin for review of the installation of a new pool fence and enlargement of an existing pool patio and two retaining walls at a single family residence. The premises are located at 61 Woods Road in the town of Orange Town, Hamlet of Palisades, New York, Chapter 12 of the Code of the Town of Orange Town, Section 12-4A, Historical Areas Board of Review. Tax map 78.15-1-8 in the R80 Zoning District. Ms. Martin, would you please make, uh, make your presentation? You know, um, is John Bruning on? John, My art? Yeah, John Bruning is oh, on. Okay, Hi, right. I'm John. Okay, so, I'm yes. the architect yes. working for Kathy. Um, so I don't know. I'm waving. So if you can see me there. Um, we can't. So no. the maybe the, can't maybe the camera, like, is the camera like, on red as opposed uh, to, like, I mean, that. I, 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 I can, can see him clearly. Oh, you can? Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe we have multiple. Um, oops. Okay. I, Never mind. <laughs> Okay, sorry. So the presentation is um, Peggy. Peggy, have... you want to do attendance, and who can you hear and see? I did. Can you, Peggy? Can you hear me, John Bruning? Yes, yes. I can. Can you see and hear me? Can you see and hear me? Yes. Just a suggestion: what everyone can do is, if you go to the top of the screen, you can click options of who you can see. You click on everyone. <laughs> And that view will give you the box of each individual that's participating. That may be easier for everyone. I see who I want to see. <laughs> um, okay, is it? Oh, do you want me to present? All right, can we continue? Sure. Okay, so the, for the Martin residents, there is an existing swimming pool, and our proposal is to expand the patio a little bit to the east and a little bit to the west and to install a new pool fence around the swimming pool and patio and okay. that is shown on drawing a-002 the top part shows the existing site conditions the bottom drawing number two shows the proposed conditions with the enlarged patio patched in and um, the drawings off to the left, there's photos off to the left that also show a, um, what the materials we're proposing are, which is just to match the existing, basically. So the patio would be the blue stone, uh, which is shown on uh, image number three. Uh, the retaining wall would be the local granite, which is on image number four. The, um, the pool fence is proposed to be in the, in the very in the visible areas around the yard to be a um, split rail fence with a wire mesh on the outside to be pool code compliant. And there, that is image number five. And then in the areas that are not visible, which is in the woods, which is to the south, and then down to the east, which is uh, below visible grade, to use the chain link fence, which is image number six. Can I see that black? All right, let's ask some questions. Any, any members of the um, board have a question or a comment? Please speak up. Lauren? No, no question. Larry? No questions. I think it's fine. All right. Um, Bill? No, I have no questions, but I am going to ask on your behalf that if people are not speaking, that they go to mute. Because we're getting a lot of feedback with the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. It wasn't a fire? Okay. All right, and will uh, Bill, you have nothing to ask or comment upon? No, he explained it very well. I've looked at the drawings and I'm fine with what he said. Thank you. All right. Uh, what about Carol? 
<laughs> uh, no questions. All right. That, Shana was absent. I have no questions either. Uh, as presented, it, does, it, it looks very nice. And I congratulate you on uh, the selection of materials. Hello, I'm, I'm here. I'm not absent. Fano? Yep. Oh, I have you on as absent. Okay. Well, absent-minded maybe, but uh, present. And do you, have you looked at the... Uh, I have and no questions. No questions. Okay. We will uh, discuss this this evening and make a decision and take a vote. And uh, you can contact Debbie in the morning uh, for the results. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. So are we to sign? Are we to sign off now? Yes. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. HABR twenty dash fourteen. Application of Boris Muller for the review of a new emergency generator and existing single family residence. The premises are located at 4 Copac Lane in the town of Orange Town, Hamlet of Palisades, New York. Chapter 12, the code of the town of Orange Town, section 12-4A. Historical Areas Board of Review, tax map 78.13 slash 1 slash 3.2 in the R40 zoning district. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mr. Muller. Yes. Take us through your process. Yeah. The, the uh, plan uh, would be to uh, put a generator on the uh, east side of the house, which is the side of the house, right against the house. Uh, it cannot be seen from the road. There are bushes that are in front of it um, and uh, really on all sides of it. Uh, and uh, so that in case the power goes out, we have a backup generator. All right. Uh, are you planning on uh, hiding it from the neighbors uh, with bushes or fencing? Or? Exactly. It's completely hidden. There are already bushes uh, yeah. that will hide it. Yes. All right. Questions? Comments? Lauren? Larry? No questions. Nope. Bill? I think it's fine. No questions. Scott? Do you have a question or a comment? I'm okay. Thank you. All right. And how about Carol? Uh, okay. No questions. Thank you. And how about Thano? Thano? No questions. All right, thank you. All right, uh, I don't either. Uh, I don't blame you for getting a generator. Have one myself. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And uh, we will discuss this this evening. And you can contact <laughs> Debbie in the morning, and she will well, give you the decision. Thank you very much. So I'll, thank I'll you. just sign off. Is that right? Just yes. <clears throat> All righty, number three, <clears throat> application of T Thomas and Carol Laval for review of pink colors at an existing family, single family residence. The premises are located at 73 Main Street, Tapan, New York, Chapter 12, the Code of the Town of Orange Town, Section 12-4A, Historical Areas Board of Review, Tax Map 77.15 slash 1 slash 2 in the CS Zoning District. Now, are the Lavals here? Are the Lavals here? I don't hear them. Margaret, she didn't um, pick up the poster, so maybe she thinks it starts at 7.30. Maybe we should come back to her. All righty. I'll make a little... All right. We're going to go on to the next one, then. Okay. H... HABR 20-15, application of Kurt and, and Sibel Frasca for a review of a new in-ground pool and cabana and new retaining walls in an existing single-family residence. The premises are located at 79 Corbett Lane in Palisades, New York. 
Chapter 12 of the Code of the Town of Orange Town, Section 12-4A, Historical Areas Board Review, Tax Map 78.19, Slash 1, Slash 21 in the R22 Zoning District. Will the interested parties please come forward? Uh, that's me, Meg Fowler. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, last Hi. time I, I presented, I tried to tie drawings in and it was a disaster. No one could see anything. So I'm hoping that you've looked at the drawings that were submitted. Um, and I also uh, sent some PDFs of the uh, sketches that were done by the landscape architect who's also working on this project just to kind of give a, a uh, visual so i'm hoping that you receive those um yes but the, the idea here this this uh property is uh terraced and so we're going to be putting a new pool on one of those terraces down sort of below the house um there are some retaining walls that are required in order to create a more flat area for the pool. Uh, we originally had thought about the pool being much further south, and that ended up requiring a lot more you know, walls. And, and that. so, by pushing the pool further north and tucking the pool house, you know, sort of on the north side of the property against a whole row of trees, um, we're able to to develop the site without too much land moving. Um, the, the materials that are going to be used are going to match everything that we've used to date. I don't know if you remember, but this is, I think, the third project that I've, I've been in front of you for folks. Mm -hmm. um, they've completed the bull shed in the front of the property, and that's all stone, and we're going to use the same stone that was used there on the retaining walls. Um, and then the patio is going to be blue stone. The little um, pool house is going to be brick. And that'll be either whitewashed or painted white. We're using slate uh, for the roof, copper gutters, all, all natural materials, basically. Uh, they want everything to sort of, you know, blend nicely into the landscape. There's going to be a lot of planting um, so that it, it looks like it's, you know, a beautiful, um, appropriate development of, of this, uh, the front of their property, which faces the river. And we've, we've had to deal with quite a bit with these slopes and how to you know, make everything fit. And uh, I think that it's it's working quite well. Is there, uh, any, is there any fencing for this pool? There will be fencing. It's just going to be, a I mean, the required fencing for uh, the pool enclosure. And so it'll just be black metal verticals, <laughs> the required spacing. Um, and it's going to be blending. It's going to we're going to do it on the lower level so it doesn't block the view from the pool deck. So it'll be down kind of closer to the property line at a lower level, and then we're going to use the walls as well um, to create that fence. So the enclosure will be a combination of the fencing and the walls. But the we just want to make sure it's code. It will it will certainly meet code, and there will be closure, uh, and we'll have self closing gates and and. Um, you know, it, every, it absolutely will be code. Are you going to add any additional lighting on the stairs, or I see it, I see it on the building? But yeah, uh, there's just going to be there'll be just paths, very low, you know, low voltage uh, path lighting along the stairs and along the the pathways um, at the base of the wall, so that it'll just give a nice little light. Nothing will be facing out; it will all be facing either down or towards the stone wall. Uh, just really to make it safe to be able to navigate down to the pool, but no bright lights. They, they want to see the the sky with stars and and not not see lights. So there'll be just the lighting on the pool house as shown, and then the path lighting, which will all be low to the ground. Okay. No lighting in the pool. No. Okay. Does anyone have a question, Lauren? I do not. Thank you. Larry? Yes. Um, Meg, I have one question. There is a parcel of land um, with a residence below this property, correct? Yes. This is like a pork chop, and they've got a very small piece of property that goes out to the river. And the property right. that's below them is significantly lower than them. But right. they won't so, see anything from, from there. Well, it, not, not what they would see. My concern is during construction that... Um, 
whatever silt fencing be maintained so that we don't have any washouts going in. We're going into the winter time, and I, I just wouldn't want to see a landslide headed downstream. Um, sure, that's sure. There, there's a there's a silt fence shown on the site plan, and we will definitely maintain that. There is, yes, I, I see that. Yes, okay, thank you. Sure. Is there any uh, bill? No, I don't have any questions, and I just compliment the architect for another nice project. She's had a couple before us, so yes. I think um, it's excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Carol? Uh, no questions. Uh, Scott? No questions. Scott? Questions? Uh, no, no questions. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone in the, I don't know anyone in the audience listening in is, if we have questions? All righty. Uh, thank you. Thank you lovely. very much for your time. Lovely, lovely. Oh, Sorry. thank you. Okay. All right. I think we'll, we'll vote tonight. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have the Lavals uh, checked in yet? Uh, nope, not yet. I tried okay. calling them and uh, their phone is on, uh, what do you call it, that... Uh, you get that funny sound when they're doing a fax or whatever. So oh I was them. Well, we'll go to the next one then. HABR 20-16, application of Bergson Gluckstern for review of a single family residence. The premise is located at 56 Woods Road in Palisades, New York. Chapter 12 of the Code of the Town of Orangetown, section 12-4A, Historical Areas Board of Review, tax map. 78.18 slash 1 slash 3.1 dash 2 in the R80 zoning district. Will the people interested please come forward and identify yourselves? Uh, hi, this is Walter Orell. I'm the architect. I'm Margaret Garcia. I'm co-architect with Walter. Um, hi, we're, Brianna. Yeah, we're Brianna Miguel Gluckstern. And they are the clients. Uh, Simon, oh, and Simon I, is there as well. I don't know if his sound is. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, we're we're presenting a house tonight um, for Brienne and Miguel. Uh, it's a one-story, sixty-one hundred square foot house. Uh, it's uh, designed to be net zero, and I just wanted to show you a larger picture. I think you have a small eleven by seventeen colored. Um, uh, yeah, there it is. Well, and uh, Margaret, can you? Uh... Um, I need to have the screen share. Uh, okay. Um, how how do we do that? Uh, someone has to grant me. Um, okay, um, can you grant us a screen share for a picture? If if that's going to hold us up, I mean, I think. Oh, there you go, Margaret. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, let, let's just move on. You guys have the uh, basic pictures. Met, many of them, uh, many of the packages that went out are in black and white, but there's one, uh, I guess the chairman's package is in color. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll move on. Uh, we do, uh, the rendered elevation is, is that on a I was just starting to just describe the house is, is net zero. It's super insulated. We have uh, triple pane windows. The southern exposures are shaded. Um, it uses state-of-the-art heat pump HVAC system with uh, geothermal wells supporting that. And then the roofs will have, uh, the, the south-facing roofs will have PV panels um, to offset the electrical use. Okay, hold this up. Can you see this? Uh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can't see oh, much. <laughs> I, I could uh, talk about the materials now. And, and you have a, everyone has a, a little booklet of photographs of, of materials that are basically similar to what we're uh, proposing. Uh, yes. The main, the primary material on the exterior is, uh, is wood. And it's a, um, it's, 
uh, it's, I'm sorry about the font. Uh, the primary uh, siding material is um, a modified wood called thermary. Uh, it's basically wood that allows you to, um, uh, you don't have to paint it or stain it. it. It's basically preserved by this process. And so we're just going to put a clear preservative on it that doesn't really change the color. So the first, um, the first page in your, um, in the booklet of materials shows that siding um, and uh, what, what we're proposing for the siding. Um, the east elevations, um, there are two gable ends that are stone, and those are bluestone, and it shows in the picture, and <clears throat> the gable ends on this house are meant to harmonize with the, the stone on this house, which is actually uh, Mr. Bergson's house, which is next door. Uh, and there are other uh, houses in the general area that uh, use this kind of stone. Um, so that's uh, that's the other primary material on the outside of the house. Uh, the next page shows um, bluestone paving, which um, the terrace and the porch and, and some of the pathways would be this, this type of bluestone paving. Um, uh, the windows uh, are wood on the inside, clad on the outside. They're Zola windows, as I mentioned before. They're triple pane windows, uh, very highly energy efficient. They're uh, R7 uh, for a glass window. That's a, that's a pretty high uh, R rating. Uh, the roof is uh, standing seam metal. Uh, there are examples of it in the, uh, in the booklet. That's a picture of the house that you all approved a couple of years ago that's now constructed at the bottom of um, Lawrence Lane. And, and we, we're using a similar kind of roof to that, a gray standing seam metal roof. Uh, the windows also are Zolva windows, which what you, are what you see in this last elevation, or last uh, photograph, rather. Um, they basically describe the type of windows that we're proposing. Um, you can see from the drawings that um, the uh, east elevation, the uh, the entry porch is uh, a kind of post and beam uh, construction. And uh, the, the other entries, the other primary entries on the south and the north side have sort of variations of that post and beam kind of uh, vocabulary. Um, that that describes it in a, in a nutshell, and I'm happy to answer any questions that I might have. Okay, we'll start. Uh, Bill? Uh, well, first of all, I, I never expect anything less than uh, what Walter has produced. Uh, excellent. <laughs> Uh, what really grabs my attention, though, is geothermal. Very impressed. <laughs> Thanks. And that's my only comment. It's very nice. Thank you. Larry? I'd have to agree with Walter, with um, Bill, about Walter's designs. They're always tremendous. For a large home, I don't think it's going to present itself that way since it is one, itself. one floor. Um, very much in keeping what's been done down on the other Bergson residence, and I love the design. Thank you. Lauren? Nothing. No, looks great. Scott? Scott? Did it need any variances based on the size? Uh, no. Did it need any variances? Uh, not, not at all. Uh, we did it, it did go through a, a very um extensive um well uh, for this lot it's part of a, a subdivision that it's taken a while to uh enact and or get uh, approved but uh this we really uh we just have had one planning board meeting so far and we uh passed and uh, we just have to go to final uh, but there's no variances okay okay how about that now do you have a question Dano? Uh, Dano's mic. There it goes. Dano? 
Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Good question. Congr congratulations all around. A lovely project. Uh, I especially appreciate the energy efficiency uh, in the area. I mean, that's it's the way we have to go. Uh, my only my only sort of cavil is isn't really with your design. The board has been accepting some time now. Uh, previous years, we've insisted on uh, dimensions present in the in the drawings to give us some idea of the height, length, etc. And uh, I, I think it would be helpful if it were included. As I said, you know, it's not limited to your presentation. It seems to be common now in a lot of presentations. And, and uh, I, I, for one, would just like to see uh, dimensions with the elevations. OK, Carol? Um, uh, no questions. I just admire the geothermal and the solar panels. I think it's, I think it's great. All right, that takes care of everyone. All right, thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the public that has a question that's uh, happened to be tuned in? No, all right, we will vote on this this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, number six. Look at all these things ringing here. H-A-B-R-12. Call from 8465. Is it anything important? I'm going to start over again without my phone ringing, hopefully. H-A-B-R-20-17. Application of Julie. Did I read this one? No, Julie Katz. Oh, yeah, uh, for an amendment to HABR 1606 for the following changes. Gravel driveway yeah. instead of paved. Uh, change from a copper roof on the rear of the dwelling to a different material. Gutters and leaders instead of the proposed rain garden and rain terrace and for a uh, pool fence at an existing single family residence. The premises are located at 11 Lawrence uh, Street in Palisades, New York. Chapter 12 of the Tax Code of the Town of Orangetown, Section 12 of the Historical Areas Word of the Year, 80.0 slash 1 slash 32 of the R40 Zoning District. Is anyone here? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Kevin Conway, I'm the local attorney. Um, okay. I'm the attorney for. Um, Ms. Katz for 11 Lawrence Lane. Already? And I want to just um, say good evening to everyone on the board tonight. I'm happy to be here to present for Ms. Katz. The, um, as you noted, Madam Chair, the application uh, is here before the board to seek an amendment from the prior approval for the minor changes uh, for, the revision, for the revision of the rain prior, the leaders and gutters, as well as uh, the shingle roofing a cedar roofing above the kitchen roof line from what was uh, previously proposed as copper. These are okay. two modest requests and are respectfully in keeping with the prior approval filed for the site plan for this renovation, historical carriage house structure and the supporting structure. Uh, by way of background, um, this board is aware that the carriage house dates from 1860 and the supporting structure, which dates from the same period, both had previously been renovated in 1993 and as this board is aware from the prior presentment and approval, the renovation is a thoughtful and positive renovation for this historic um, property, which includes the recent addition with the renovated kitchen and dining room. And the character of the proposed addition is based upon the traditional 19th century farmhouse. The addition of uh, roughly 3,175 square feet when combined with the square footage of the existing original carriage house and supporting structure of 1,000 square feet resulted in a total of 5,200 square feet. Um, the style is in keeping with what um, the house originally was and a farmhouse uh, or carriage house of that, uh, at that time. Um, and it's in keeping with the immediate vicinity of the homes located on 11 Lawrence Lane. The um, requested modifications aren't material, respectfully, that the gutters and leaders would not lead to any increased runoff on the site 
Um, Stephen Sprocco from Bill Youngblood's office had done a further analysis. I asked him to re-review it with regard to drainage. And he stated that uh, he had reviewed the pre and post conditions for the site and has verified that the original al analysis that they presented to this board, that there's no further drainage attenuation that would be necessary or warranted as the preconditions pervious area covered approximately 13,000 square feet and the post conditions as built in case an impervious coverage area of 12,526 square feet. Therefore, by inspection, there's no increase of any of all sites as regard to the result from the as built site improvements. The um, Storm discharge reduce offsite with the corresponding reduction overall impervious area. Impervious area. Also, when I checked with Bill and with uh, Steve uh, earlier today, they weren't aware as to why rain guards were originally proposed because actually their original analysis for the drainage, they believed it was be meters and gutters. So, um, as a result, that their original analysis and their further analysis was based upon what's actually installed, which are leaders and gutters. So there should be uh, anything decrease, not an increase. Um, and as a side note, Bill wanted me just to advise the board that the DEC um, rain gardens were kind of a, um, a big push from the DEC from the state uh, previously, but now they've become less uh, enamored with them. He said because there's a lot of maintenance issues that go along with uh, rain garden structures as opposed to leaders and cutters. The um, the client also had, uh, when they had made the switch to leaders and gutters, the um, all the connections, this, we had sent uh, photos to Debbie, I believe she has them tonight, uh, which show the, the uh, leaders and gutters system, but it's all tied into the existing drainage. Uh, so there's no issues from that aspect of it. Okay. As for the roof above the kitchen, we also have um, photos for that as well. It's a very small area, which originally uh, was proposed for the standing seam metal roof on the back of the kitchen. The um, due to the fear that the roof area, as proposed, too flat, and that um, a cedar um, cedar roof wouldn't um, the the roofing tiles wouldn't work. So that's why the original uh, the client had proposed a copper uh, metal roofing. But as it turns out, during the reconstruction, the pitch was uh, great enough to support the traditional cedar roof shingle tiles that were installed, and we have photos of that. Okay. So, that part of the roof suppose, is asphalt. That's not cedar shingle. I'm sorry. I'm using the... It was it was a oh, steep yeah. enough pitch for asphalt shingle, <clears> but <throat> not for cedar shingle, and not flat. It didn't require a standing seam either. So that's um, that's what we're proposing. And... The, um, the gravel driveway is something new. That, that was done, and we received the approval uh, last week from the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals with regard to the gravel. Okay. All right. And that, that is different than what was proposed um, or what might have been proposed before. And that's in keeping with all the other homes that are located in that same vicinity neighborhood. All right. All right. Let's I, start. I, I, one second. I don't have a, a description of the fence. I, I need that. With regard to the fence, there's just to the board certification, there is an existing perimeter fence that abuts the pool. Um, it's the fence covers the property and is gated. The um, previously, and, and R-326 of the 2017 New York State Uniform Code uh, Supplement, I, we had asked the fire inspector, Mike Petman, uh, to look into this, and he's taking this issue to the fire inspectors, the um, fire commissioners, the local fire commissioners, because this pool that's on the site has been there historically. It's always been used by the fire service as a water source because there are no fire hydrants in the immediate neighborhood and vicinity. This pool is unusual because it's an under, it has an underground uh, springs, but it also has a pumping uh, station that provides constant water into the pool itself been used historically by the fire service, by the local fire service as a water source. So that's why there was never an immediate uh, perimeter fence installed around the pool itself. So the fire department could gain access. More recently, this, and that's historically been the case, more recently in July of 2018, there was a wildfire that was in the immediate neighborhood threatening uh, the neighborhood homes. One of the homes couldn't be accessed because of the fence. Fire department was able to use the water source from the pool and pump out the pool 
at 11 Lawrence Lane in order to put out the fire. Um, so because of that, I'd ask Mike Bettman, who is taking this issue to the fire inspector, we're gonna ask for a waiver for that from that requirement because the property is, including the pool area itself, is sufficiently protected from trespassers due to the existing perimeter fence. And that the, an additional fence, an interior fence would be, uh, would prevent the fire department from accessing pool source, which they most recently during emergency fire. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing. If, uh, if we're unsuccessful with that effort, then um, we would return back to the board, seek a, uh, an amendment for what the interior pool fence would be installed. But it's our expectation that that's not gonna be the case uh, because I spent, uh, we provided the fire inspector with the information and he's gonna meet very shortly with the fire district chiefs on this issue. That's a legitimate issue. That's the Palisade Spark Hill Fire Department, right? Well, actually, he, he's going to meet with the fire commissioners from uh, not just the immediate, but um, when he does meetings like this, he was going to meet with the fire commissioners for the county. Um, that's what he advised. And I advised him that I'm happy to appear along with um, the client, the architect of the, or Mr. Youngblood's office, if need be. But um, it's certainly, it was an interesting issue from his perspective because he was aware of the fact that the um, site has always been used for that purpose and it was used successfully on that purpose just very recently because i guess that area the board's familiar there is a lot of vegetation and growth there's a lot of homes that exist in that area all in close proximity to one another and there are no existing hydrant systems. and this pool continually repumps so even when the fire service um puts the department trucks put the um the pumping mechanism in it refills very quickly so they're able to use it not more than just uh, emptying it out as a one as a one-time thing i hope that all works out but i just have a note from the building inspector saying that part of why this application is back is because wow. a code compliant pool barrier and gates have to be shown well that so, came up that wasn't and debbie just just so we're clear on the record I did speak to the building inspector as well, but that was not part of the original application. That issue he brought up very, very recently as a result of just inspecting the property after the uh, after the work was done. So that's a new issue that he brought up. This application's been for this, this board this, for an extended this, period and the applicant has uh, spent large sums of money to improve the house. You'll see from the photos, it's a beautiful, I'm, uh, I'm not saying, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not arguing any of that. I'm just saying no, this no, email was sent to me September 11th. So it's, it's going to hold things up is all I'm saying. Well, ultimately, with the, ultimately with the building inspector, he issues the CFO, not the board. Yeah. So it, ultimately, if we couldn't resolve it with him, that would be true. But with coming back to the board for tonight, there are the changes that we indicated in the application in the, for the renovation, which was the uh, the roofing above the kitchen as well as the uh, the heater the leaders and gut instead of the rain and he was referred back for for also for the pool barrier and gates that was part of the referral from the building inspector for this application to come back to, in front of the board i understand and okay can i just can I, can I, can I, can I, mr conway it's, it's included in the application so it, it would have to be considered as part of the application you're... I'm sorry, is that Brittany that was speaking? Because you cut out. Who was speaking? Who was Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Can hear you. My sound keeps cutting out. This is Brittany Cordero. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Brittany. Go ahead, Brittany. Mr. Conway, I'm just I'm just noting that the pool fence was included in this application. So while you're saying that it's an issue that you've been dealing with with the building inspector, <laughs> it's still part of the consideration of this application. Oh, I understand, but it came up very recently. That's what I'm just explaining to the board. It wasn't an issue that uh, we it hasn't. It didn't come up very recently. That's not true. It came up at the very last inspection of this huge project that I did, Glenn Meyer then at told me that I needed to comply with the pool fence, which was out of the scope of my permit. I didn't even touch that area. So 
literally at the very last. And then he, he offered that I alarm the doors and even my dog door and put an alarm in the pool that that would pass, that's New York state code. Because, and, and mind you, I do have a perimeter fence, I do. And we did that. I spent all the money for 11 major door alarms. Um, I, even, I did the carriage house, even though he said to me at the time, you don't need to because that wasn't included in, in this permit. But I did it anyway. And then the next inspection, that was a fail. After literally spending all that money and the alarm, and it worked perfectly well when he came. So, so this is, it, it's a really unfortunate situation because had he said something 20 months earlier, any time during that, with all of the time, the expense, the money, the, 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 everything I had went into doing this project. I don't know if you have personally come uh, seen it, but it was a labor of love and a lot more. And to, to, to not have said something earlier after doing all of the site work, masonry, retaining walls, and just at least make it fair that I could include it in what I think was a pretty fantastic job here. So here I sit before you guys, and we are. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand why a perimeter fence here is not suitable, and you want a fence inside a fence in this neighborhood, literally backing up to what is my fence there, he claims is not my fence. The stockade fence that lines the pool is my fence. His argument is if she decides to take it down, then I have no pool fence. It's my fence. It's her pool fence too, as a matter of fact. But, Just, but we're getting here in the middle of, of neighbors having a, a quarrel over a fence. We don't Sorry? get into the middle of neighbors getting into an argument. I, there's no quarrel. There's no quarrel no, there's at all. No, there's no neighbor issue. There, there's none. It, it's not at all. I just, I'm just not understanding. I just, yeah. I, I, it's been, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's an expense that I didn't originally plan for. That's number one. And number two, again, I created, you know, I think well, a beautiful the home here and uh, a fence inside for my fence goal. just seems un un unreasonable. I I'm happy to electrify my gates. The um, the excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I'm, whoever is talking, I can't hear you at all. I'm not sure if anybody else can. Can anybody hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. The application has for a pool fence and that's why we're questioning yeah. this. Right. somebody i don't know who's speaking and that's why we're questioning you where is the pool fence and you say the entire property is fenced in that's correct and the yeah. perimeter that's fence correct. backs up to the pool and, and you're also, also and, and you also, also mentioned that the neighbor says it's their fence and you say no, it's no, no, no. I didn't say that. <clears throat> there's one fence the inspector fence that covers the client's that property one not person please i'm not sure i'm not i just want one person at a time speaking please may, may i make a suggestion please anyone who's not actively speaking please turn off your microphones that way, uh, the audio will be a lot better and will solve a lot of problems. All right. I am asking about this fence that backs onto the next property, the back of the pool. Now, is that your fence? The fence predates me owning this house. And I was told by Mar Marjorie Baumgold that, in fact, it is the fence for this property, whether it sits on the property line back and forth. And Leslie next door, Rod, Leslie, I can't remember Leslie's last name, Roddy Smith's house, we share the fence as a pool fence. There's but no I'm, his or her, it's our fence. That's how some of it's on my property line, on my property, some's on hers. It's, if you go by that, you can't tell. We're both very happy with the fence. The fence isn't the issue. The issue is Glenn, the inspector wants me to put a fence up against that fence. Do you understand uh, what I'm saying? Yes, uh, like it's just, not, it's a just, metal fence inside that fence. I'm just yeah. giving a for instance. 
Could you that say what that one more said? time? What the inspector, Mike Batman? No, uh, Glenn Mike. Mike. The fire inspector. Right, he's no. saying Glenn, he, May, Glenn Mayer is building, building inspector. Glenn Mayer. He's saying he wants you to put a fence on the left hand side of that fence. Say, for instance, wrought iron or whatever. Is that he correct? Wants the fence to be, I, I don't know how else to, to literally back to back on the same line. Back to back. How tall is this fence? Uh, five, six feet. It's a traditional, like, stockade fence. Six feet, I think it is. Debbie, what and are the rules of our side fence stockade fence? Debbie? It's a stockade fence, yeah. I, I, I don't know all the rules of you. I don't know exactly what's going on with the fence thing. I just wanted to make a point that that was one of the, the things that was referred to the board for. If they can work this out with Mike Bettman and get clearance on it, I just want to see her be able to get her CFO. I just need the, to get my CEO. This is going on just way too long. So I'm happy but to put whatever I, I, you guys want. I can't imagine yeah. anything really going to look great, a fence on a fence. To well, start with. Talk, excuse me, I want to talk to Debbie about this. Debbie, well, go sure. ahead please, about Mike Bettman. Oh, I don't know whether Mike Bettman can waive a right over the building inspector. And I just don't want the, the applicant held up again for not getting a certificate of occupancy. If she needs to have a pool fence, just present some kind of fence that you would be willing to put up so that you can get your CFO. Even if it's one of those that come down, you know, they, they have safety fences that you put up and you can take down. I don't know exactly what they are. I don't know the qualifications of it. But I know that that was one of the things she was referred back to this. Julia, really, your, your mic is off. Hold on, you're muted. I'm going to mute myself now. Yeah, I don't want Debbie. I don't want to interrupt you. Um, I am happy to get a playpen fence. Um, I feel like it's cheating to a degree, but I mean, if if, uh, if that's what you guys want, I'm happy to do okay. it. I know that you. Debbie, Debbie, just so you're aware, the if Mike agreed and the fire commissioners agreed that we would then jointly per, um, petition the New York State Board, which they could override. But he hasn't met with them yet to decide what this is going to be yet, has he? No, oh, Mike, Mike has to do that. Has the so information. So we're, so we're just, we're nowhere with the fence then. I mean, if you buy a fence that can be broken down and then he comes and says, you have to have a regular fence because it is some state law. That's a waste of your money and time. I, all he's, all he's, he's doing is asking He just for, wants me to adhere to the New York State pool, whatever guidelines. A playpen fence is certainly adhering to the guidelines of New York State pool safety code. I can't remember. So I, I believe, uh, Madam Chair, that the client what Julie's saying now, we have no problem fashioning an approval that advises that if the um, if the fire commissioners don't otherwise um, engage for an appeal, that the client would install a interior fence that meets All the right. code. Yeah, because I don't want to hold this up. No, and, and I appreciate I Debbie that. assisting with that because that's the single biggest problem that this did come up. I've only came into the into the case recently, but it did come up at the very end, and, and that's the unfairness to the client with all due respect to the building inspector. I so. understand. I understand. <clears throat> and the fact that it's being used as a, a water source for the fire department, I think that has to come into, uh, into the story. Right, and it's right. legitimate. Does yeah. anybody have any questions or comments on the board? Uh, Lauren? Um, I, can't hear you. I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't understand how to deal with this fence issue. And Brittany, how would we deal with the fence issue? Okay, I just, I didn't want to interrupt. I was going to wait for the board to give their comments. So, Mr. Conway, the way that the application is presented is that you are going to include um, a proposal for a pool fence. So, at this present time, included in this application, there is no proposal for a pool fence, correct? I, you I'm cut just out at the very end. You that I would be willing to put in one of those. I would be willing to put in one of those. Okay. 
the client's indicating that we if can I can be, if I can be clear will install an interior profile okay but as far as this application that's before the board today if if there's to be consideration for a pool fence then it would need to be part of this application if it's not part of this application then the application can be considered but without the pool fence the board cannot make a determination on a pool fence if there's no presentation to the board for it so so what constitute a presentation can i ask you if i if i i think that you guys all know what those pool fences that encircle your pool those mesh i know i could name three neighbors right here that have them and they must have been approved somehow through this process so that is what i am proposing to do if you need me to come back with pictures of it then i guess i'll have to come back next month with pictures of it i'm not i'm not sure otherwise what it is I can offer you. My pool is 60 feet long by 22 feet wide at the widest. It's shaped like a peanut. I think that there are some pictures of it in the tonight's that I sent to Debbie mm -hmm. for our meeting. Um, yeah. So uh, beyond that, I can, you're right, Brittany, I can't offer you anything more than just that. All right, then. Um, and, and Brittany, it's my understanding as the attorney for the applicant, that if the applicant's indicating that they'll uh, submit a fence that complies with the New York Code, the section I just cited, um, the building uh, that's, yeah. the building inspector was looking for something more. He was looking for a certain type, more. He was looking for a style or anything else, just an interior style or anything else, just an interior pool. I feel like we're between the rock and the hard place here. We were talking about the fence. I talked about the fence. If you I want don't to come see back that why the uh, fence should hold up the application the exact, the exact type of fence when we're indicated the will install a fence that's important. Right. So the building inspector makes that determination anyway, not the board, whether or not it's coming up or whether or not it's coming up. I'm sorry, that was so garbled. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. The, the building inspector would determine the fence that would be proposed or whether it's code compliant. The board doesn't do that in any case. So I have plenty of applications where we indicate that we're going to put in a, well, we, uh, a fence and the, <clears throat> and the building inspector determines whether or not it's code compliant for this issue. Well, we can ask for a continuation well, we of the pool fence. Continuation of the pool fence. Mr. Codway, if I may. So just because of the, the, the language of the application, it indicates that the um the pool fence was part of this application but from earlier communication from you it was indicated that you were attempting to get a waiver from the fire commissioner and that in the event that you were unable to then then your client would obtain a proper fence to surround the pool which is fine but the problem is that this application is to review the pool fence and because there isn't isn't a pool fence application or any specifics or any details with regard to that the board is unable to review it so just as as um, Ms. Chairwoman indicated, if you wanted to do a continuation on, on the issue of the pool, then you and your client can come back and present with details and specifications of what pool fence um, you would present to the board. But without any details or specifications about that specific pool fence that should have been included in this application, the board is unable to review it. Is that understood by everyone? I don't agree with it, but I, I understand what you're saying. So, I'm not, you know, would you like we to would, ask for? Would you like would, to ask for a continuation till the November meeting? Ms. Cash? No, I'd like to just. I'd like to talk about this a little bit more. I really would. There isn't anything else to say. I'm we don't not really listen. understanding what more, Brittany. Again, if I came back next time, we're going to sit here and talk about the exact same thing. So. But that Time you will have specifics I from. Uh, and I do, I'm not meaning to be fresh here, but this is just insane. Like it's so hard to believe after all of the work that I have done here, and Larry Bucarelli, I cannot believe that you are not stepping up to the plate here and backing up what's going on here. It's really, really. Excuse insane. me. Excuse me. What I am going to say is because I was involved in this project from the very beginning, Miss Katz. I am going to ask to be relieved from this because of conflict of interest. Thank you. 
the the question here is just the pool fence. We can vote on the rest. We can have the pool fence with the specifics at our next meeting. If we, how can we vote on anything? We don't have any information. Brittany, just like Brittany, our lawyer mentioned. Brittany, if if Mr. Conway gets the fire department or anybody else to approve the present fence situation, then nobody has to come back here again. I would like so, to make a comment at some point too. I believe you can make, you can condition the approval on an either or, because if we don't receive the waiver, favor, uh, the waiver from the fire district, we will come back and present a fence. You can condition your approval based upon that waiver or not having that waiver or not having that waiver. We can but, do approvals all the yeah, time. I, I, I've been, I, I, we I, would know. The zoning board, the planning no. board, it represent a lot of applicants and a lot of objectors. A lot of you can condition the approval on that issue. The approval. So she got on that issue. An approval tonight, and if the fence issue was not resolved by the fire inspectors, where we could get a waiver, and back we come. Brittany, please will uh, answer that. That way, the board's not making a decision on a pool fence that they haven't seen. How can we? How can we make an approval no, of no, anything? Saying you wouldn't. That we don't have any. No, you wouldn't, you you wouldn't, have you wouldn't be making. It. It's like you, know, you have promise. everything but the fence. And the fence issue. Everything but the fence. And the fence issue. The fence issue is with the fire. Mr. Conway, the issue is with the fire. Inspector. One way with it and one way without it. Absolutely. No, there's no that would be. Mr. Conway, there was. That would be. I know I, I'm I don't know why it's not working I apologize We cannot Hello? vote on anything we cannot see or have specifics for. Um, Peggy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, this is Carol. May I make a comment? Please. Yes, my comment is regarding the fire approval. Um, I, I hear people talking about a Rockland County Board of Commissioners fire commissioners, I don't think there is such a thing. I think there is the Palisade Spark Hill commissioners and there is some fire bureaucracy in the county, but I don't think they're commissioners. So I think we have to be careful on what we ask for or what or what they want. That's that's all I'm saying. I don't know the proper hierarchy among the fire professionals. It has to start that's, with the Spark Hill Palisades uh, fire yes. commissioners and their inspector yes. and I believe That's correct each fire department has its own inspector right and and they're the ones that are an inspector and commissioners right so not, a, not necessarily not the, county. I don't know where this Rockland County thing is that probably they meet and talk but I don't think they make a decision for what happens in correct. the Palisade Spark Hill district I have correct. never heard of making a decision what's happened in Tapan or any other place right but that's for someone to find out but that, that's for the applicant's lawyer to question uh the okay. spark hill palisade commissioners we can vote tonight on the driveway the roof <coughs> the, materials, the gutters the litter the, you know, but i don't want to vote on the pool fence because we have no specifics and we okay, ask, do it ask if i don't know who's speaking no we can vote and ask for that and we can ask for a continuation I, on the I've got to, oh, one second you can't continue part of it and make a decision on part of it it's either got to be a whole decision on all of it or it has to be continued uh, otherwise it's a separate fee to come back for the pool again for the fence 
Uh, Debbie, is that you? Is, is that you talking? Yes. Okay, so we cannot split it. Right. Okay, That's I didn't realize that. Cleanest, I'm sorry. The can they can they, do with, it. can they withdraw the pool request, Brittany? They can. Debbie? If they if they withdraw the pool fence request. She is not going to get a CFO from the building inspector. And that's the entire reason she's in front of the board. You can either approve the kind of fence she's talking about that comes down. It's not a permanent. It stays up when, when everybody's in the, not in the pool. When they're in the pool, it comes down. It's like a safety fence that you, if you have little kids. All right. I, I, would go along with that. I, don't, I don't understand why that's not a suitable. Like because they. I they have a perimeter fence. I had gates, and now I'm willing to put in the playpen fencing. I mean, right, but the board is asking to see the play fen playpen fencing. They don't know what you're talking about. Okay, Debbie, I'm going to send you a picture of it right now. I, I, I can't get a picture of it right now. I'm on my phone in my house. I, I, I can't get, get it right now. And did so you give them the, the other pictures that I sent you? I, if they were sent earlier... Uh, <laughs> If they weren't sent this evening, then they have them already. I sent them to you before the meeting. I, I'm not in back the office. Email. I'm, I'm not in the office. So, no. None of okay. us, unfortunately, are in an office, in our, in our office. That's the bad part about this. Um, we can't well vote aware. on I'm well aware. Um, well, it makes me it makes me really sad that you guys aren't willing to you know visualize exactly what I'll be there next month. But there are you. seven of us. Yeah, there are seven of us, so we can visualize something different. Each one of us can visualize something different. That's the problem. We can't all agree if we don't all agree what we we see. And if we can't see it, we can't agree on it. I mean, we'd love to. Especially when we have to get we have to hear from the. Someone in the official fire service. Well, and, and Carol, just so you know, that is, that that is not the, true. You don't have to hear from the fire service. If just I'm so you know, Carol, what, I dealt with the fire inspector who advised me what the process was. So I'm just reporting back. So that that's okay. And I asked, and he asked me to send him the information, which I did, because he was very interested in the issue because he knows it's a legitimate issue. Right. Okay. But I understand well, what the board is saying as well. I don't want to waste so, any more of your, my time, honestly. So if you can't approve any of it, then I guess we are going to uh, defer to next month. Please ask for continuation verbally. Uh, if if yes, we announce that it's being asking. continued till next month, no new letters have to go out. So can we uh, announce the date and time of the next meeting, which um, is the second Tuesday of November? I don't have a calendar in front of me. I'm sorry. It's November 10th is the second Tuesday. November 10th at 7 p.m. The meeting will be continued. Ms. Katz will be first on the agenda. Yes. And she will send pictures of the proposed uh, playpen type fence that she's talking about. Is that okay? Don't say it. Wait, hello? Yeah. Mr. That's Conway? Fine for the I'm not sure you're asking if that is okay. I'm asking, asking Julie. <laughs> Yes, that is okay. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Nice. All righty. Heidi, just before you move on, this is Brittany Cordero. I just had to join. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I said, this garbage. is Brittany Cordero. I just yes. had to join from my phone because I'm having tech technical difficulties. So I'm letting you know I am here, but I'm just caller number four. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the next one. Before we do, once again, I'm going to beg everybody to please mute the microphones if they're not actively speaking. It really will make a difference in our ability to hear what's going on. Please. Okay, I'm going to read off the next one. All right, HABR 20-18. Application of Elizabeth Matsuda for re review of a dormer, new roof, gutters, and soffit repair at an existing single family residence. The premises are located at 96 Greenbush Road in Tapan, New York, Chapter 12, 
of the Code of the Town of Orange Town Section 12-4A Historical Areas Board of Review. Tax map 77.2-10, the R50 zoning district. Um, is she there? Is uh, Elizabeth Masuda with us or representative? Um, yes, both uh, Elizabeth Matsuda is here. Uh, it says Glenn under her picture. And I'm Elizabeth Parks, uh, the architect, and I'd be happy to walk through the uh, drawings with you. Uh, I was confused with the house. Uh, it said uh, 98 one place and 96 another. I wasn't sure I had the right uh, house <coughs> when I expected. Um, it is 98. Was that my mistake, perhaps? I, I, if so, I apologize. It says 96 on my paperwork here, 96 Greenbush Road. It is 98, actually. All right. Debbie, did you note that? Okay, she's muted. All righty. Uh, all right, take us through your um, project, please. So, yes, thank you. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, again, Elizabeth Parks, architect for this project. And um, uh, the Matsudas have a, a small house on Greenbush Road. Uh, right. It's not a particularly historic house, but it's a it's a sweet little cottage. And um, the although the ceiling is quite low uh, under the roof on the second floor, there are two bedrooms up there and a very small bathroom that where you really uh, hardly have head height. You, there is no head height for the shower. So the project is to uh, add a new dormer on the um, uh, west side of the house. And um, we looked at a couple of different uh, ideas for how to do that. A typical um, shed style dormer and a smaller gable dormer in that location. Um, but we ended up uh, with a, uh, a relatively uh, larger dormer uh, to mimic what's happening on the east of, uh, of the house, the front of the house, which has um, a large uh, intersecting gable facing the, facing the road. So although uh, this dormer is, uh, will only be for the purposes of, of making the uh, bathroom uh, stand upable, um, the, uh, the, the dormer has, uh, again, to, to mimic the uh, geometry and style of the existing house. And so the siding uh, will match the existing. Uh, we can get that uh, composite uh, siding. It doesn't have asbestos in it, uh, but it looks uh, just the same. Uh, and uh, the trim will be white um, as, as the existing house. It happens that um, the, a tree uh, fell and damaged the roof. Uh, so they will, in fact, be doing the whole roof with new asphalt shingles, uh, a laminated architectural high-definition uh, shingle, similar to the existing, both the house and the shingles. Uh, 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 shall I... Um, I can't hear. Scott, would you please mute, mute your uh, microphone? Matt, can you mute him? Scott, Scott, can you mute your microphone, please? When you're moving the papers around, we can't hear the people speaking. Larry, stop. Is, is there, um, uh, I think that's all I have to say, um, uh, unless, but of course, if there are any questions. All right, I have, I have questions. I'm gonna go across the line here. First is Larry, do you have any questions about this project? No questions, I think it's fine, thank you. Okay, Bill? I think it's very nice, uh, nicely done and, um, I think you'll hopefully uh, you won't grow any any taller when you're taking showers. So, but it, it looks it looks great. Scott, 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 
Scott, you have any comments? Thano? Thano. Uh, it's nicely done, and uh, as per my previous comments, looks uh, good to me. On an earlier uh, proposal, uh, thank you for including. Uh, looks good to me. The elevations. Yes, you're welcome. I said it looks good to me. Terrific. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Thano. Carol. Yes. Um. I. I no questions, but I'm. I'm very pleased with the way it looks. I think it's a it's a good representation of of, of Japan. And Lauren, are you still there? I, I I agree. Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have no questions. Is anyone uh, tuned in on the audience that has a question? No. All right. It's a very nice project. I'm sure it'll be coming handy to be able to stand up upstairs. Thank you. We will make a decision this evening, and you can contact Debbie in the morning uh, about our decision, okay? Terrific. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. All right, everybody on board? I don't yes. think the Lavelles, came, the Lavelles came back. They're here. They, they're here? I mean, there's, there's someone that says Carol Lavelle. Carol? Here, I am here. Oh, I'm good. Here. All right. I'm going to read this off then, please. All right. HABR uh, 20-15, application of Thomas and Carol Laval for review of paint colors at an existing family residence. The premises are located at 73 Main Street, Tapan, New York. She is. Chapter 12 of the Code of the Town of Orangetown, Section 12-4A, Historical Areas Board of Review. Uh, tax map 77.15 slash 1 slash 2 in the CS zoning district. Welcome. Take us through your project. Well, we simply want to uh, repaint the house uh, in color. Gray on the siding, white on the um, uh, uh, the, the uh, porch and the trim, and uh, a dark blue on the doors. And you have okay. the paint chips. That's the yes. You uh, you sent me gray paint chips, but I spoke to your husband, and he said it was the polo blue. That was the decision. No, that's that's the door. The door. Yes. The door. Yeah, there are about four doors. You can't see one in the back of the house. Um, and then the gray is uh, called stone, by Benjamin Moore. Uh, that's going to be the siding. Where the tan is now, it will be stone. Um, where the uh, white is now, it will be uh, the whatever that is, Bavarian cream. And the doors will be the, the uh, polo blue. Yeah, I have that right here, the polo blue. Okay. Anyone have a question or a comment about this project? Larry? You approve? Do you have any questions? No, no, I do not have any questions. Thank you. Right. Bill? I like the dark color. <laughs> Scott? 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 All righty. Uh, Thano, any comments? Very nice. Very nice. And Lauren? Carol is great. Yeah, I agree. And Carol? <laughs> yes, I think that the colors are extremely complimentary. I do too. Okay, <laughs> so we have no uh, no one in the audience uh, tuned in that has a comment about this. If not so, we will close it and uh, we will vote this evening and you can speak to Debbie tomorrow morning about our decision. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. All right. Shall we start? First one, Carol Martin at 61 Woods Road about an, a new pool fence and enlargement of an existing pool patio and the retaining walls. There was uh, no comment about it. Um, all in favor? Make it, make, I mean. Um, Someone needs to make a motion. Sorry, Peggy. Make a motion. I so move. I'll second. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Against, against, passed. All right, the second application of Boris Muller for a uh, new emergency generator at uh, Fort Copac Lane. Would anybody like to make a motion for the acceptance Aye. of that? Aye. I second. Larry. I, I made a motion. Did you make the motion? Yes. Okay, and okay. Lauren seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Against? No one's against. Okay, application of Thomas and Carol Laval for paint change on their 73 Main Street Tapan uh, house. Anyone I will like be to make a motion? Dano made a motion. Who's going to second it? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? No one's against. Okay. Application of Kurt and Sabelle Frasca for the uh, review of a new and ground pool and cabana retaining walls at 79 Corbett Lane in Palisades. We had no comment about this. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move, so I move. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Nobody's against. All right. The application of Bergson Gluckstern. I'm sorry. What? Said, at 56 Woods Road in Palisades for the new home. Review of the single family residence. Uh, we had no comment about that. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll move. I don't know who's talking. I am. I don't. That was oh, Dana. Dana. Anyone second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Again. Okay. The next one was the uh, Julie Katz, which is going to be held for a continuation on November 10th. Then for the last one, we had uh, application Aye. of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Batsuda for the premises on, uh, well, it's 98 Greenbush Road in Tapan for the Dormer. Anyone like to make a motion for acceptance? I'm a Larry. Larry, yeah. Larry and Lauren, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? No one against. The end. All right, listen, folks, uh, please, for next month, if we're still doing it this way, uh, obviously keep your microphone shut off, but also, uh, Madam Chairman, if you could ask each caller uh, to have their names typed out, because all I see is caller number three, and I know it's it's Carol, but... Uh, there were other people on that I that I didn't know who they were, so I didn't could... get anything on my on my screen. Oh. All I got was a voice. I didn't know that people were even that Carol and Tom were even there, because I had called out for them earlier and there was no answer. But I guess they, yeah. you know, tuned in at seven thirty instead. You don't have your names the names on your screen. Uh for the board I do, and for the lawyer, but not for uh. The first one, Mrs. Miss Martin. The rest I did not. And the oh yes, the the lawyer at the end, Conway at the end. Just Otherwise ask if they they, they type in their names. They they, yeah, they have the ability to type their names in. It did not show up. Here. Right now I see Larry, Bill, Scott, Lauren, and you, and me. What are you What are you on? Are you, are you on a computer or are you on a? I'm on like a, a. No no no. I'm on my iPad. Yeah, because you're not getting as many screens as the, if you're on a computer, you get more screens. I'll so have to go right on. Right now, there I'll, are six, I'll, I'll, there like are right 12, here, I'll go on it next screens. Time. I'll go on also, it right here. I'll go on it next time. Yeah. Also, to Peggy, this is, this is Brittany Cordero. When I mentioned earlier about the view at the top of the screen, you could also have just active cameras, and that's why you're only seeing certain people. Because if the camera isn't on, then their name isn't shown up. So for example, I have a little, Carol Val, I was I have able a little, to see little, I have a little green circle with a camera, a white camera, and that's on. Yeah, no, I mean in the in the actual box in the program, 
if you see, you can click on view. It should say view everyone who's talking, active camera, or hide everyone. Those are the options in which you can re review the, the screens of each individual that's speaking. I'm so, uh, but Thano, that's just, that's a good note. So for the next meeting, we'll just make sure that everyone has their name on it if, if they're calling in and they're not identified. Right. This is, I don't know. I am not, I, I'm, I am not a tech whiz. If you have Alzheimer's or dementia, I can help you. But if, but then you wouldn't know. But then you wouldn't know I was helping you. Peggy, Peggy, <laughs> Peggy. Peggy. Hello, Peggy. Yes. I have a question for Scott. Scott, what are you using to tune in for the uh, meeting? I think it's a bandwidth issue. I I have the same thing as Peggy, the iPad. Not working. It, he's working on an iPad. You do your your delayed connection to us. You, you need to move closer. iPad, he says. Right. You need to either get closer to Earth or come from around the moon. <laughs> I really can't hear you, seriously. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> <He's>... <laughs> Oh, a lot of feedback tonight. I wish this was a nice the last time with seven <laughs> items. Anyway. Okay, everybody. I will see you all next month. Good night. Hey, Peggy. Good thank you, Peggy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good thank night. You. Peggy, you were doing great. Peggy, I'm here. Who wants me? I, I just wanted to he make sure you Okay. Hello? Hello? Somebody wanted me to talk to yeah, me? I, I wanted to make sure that you adjourn the meeting, but they confirmed, so we're good. Oh, okay. Okay. Good night. I said good you. night. Bye, everyone.